Direct your thoughts to the breath. Direct your attention to the breath. Direct your whole mind to the breath. And try to keep it in that direction. In the Mangala Sutta, this is called having yourself rightly directed. It's one of the ways that you bless yourself, protect yourself. Because the nature of the mind is it doesn't just sit in one place, it moves. The problem is that it moves in many different directions and can change direction very quickly. In fact, there's nothing that can change direction as quickly as the mind. When the Buddha talks about change, this is the big change he's worried about. You try to get the mind in a good direction and suddenly it veers off someplace else. The change in the world is just part of the nature of the world. Anything that's put together by causes, conditions, is going to change when those causes and conditions inevitably change. As you said, if you look for your happiness there, if you make that your direction, you're just going to keep on suffering. But if you can learn how to use causes and conditions to aim at something that doesn't change, then you're rightly directed. So right now we're trying to create a state of concentration in the mind. Direct your thoughts to the breath, the body in and of itself. Be ardent alert, mindful, put aside greed and distress with reference to the world. That's the basic formula. That's how you get into concentration, where the mind can settle in, but still maintain its right direction. You do that by learning not to pay attention to anything that would disturb you right now. Background sound of the plane there, the sound of the crickets. Any pains anywhere in the body. This is an important principle in learning to keep yourself in the right direction, which is endurance. We're so easily deflected. Often just a slight word or two from someone else can get you deflected for hours. Pains in the body can get you deflected. You want to sit down, meditate, there's a pain here and there's a pain there, and you decide, well, maybe I'll lie down. And then you lie down and you fall asleep, heading off in another direction entirely. So do what you can to develop your endurance. And one of the best ways of developing endurance is not to focus on the difficulties, but to focus on the things that you can make comfortable, that you can move in the right direction. Right now with the breath, you can breathe in all kinds of ways. What would be a really satisfying way to breathe? Energizing if the body is tired, calming if it's tense. Trying to figure out what the body needs right now. And then allow yourself to enjoy that. Learn how to savor the breath in the same way that a connoisseur of good cheese or whatever would be very sensitive to the taste. When the breath is really comfortable, the more sensitive you make it, your mind to it, the more it's willing to settle in. And then the more comfortable the breath gets. They can help each other along in that way. And then you can think about the direction you're going. In the Noble Eightfold Path, the factor that's mainly concerned with direction is right resolve. You resolve on renunciation, in other words, renouncing sensuality. You do that as you're sitting here meditating. We're not thinking about sensual thoughts. We're looking for happiness in the form of the body, which is something different. It's a higher level of pleasure.
And the second right resolve is resolve on non-ill will, in other words, goodwill for all. And here again, you're showing goodwill for yourself by trying to develop the resources you have inside, and goodwill for others. No one else is harmed by the fact that you're here focusing on your breath. You're not out there trying to straighten out the world in line with your ideas. That's one of the big ways that we get pulled off the path. A sense of righteous anger that then develops into a sense of this person should be punished, that person should be punished. That's really ill will. No matter how right we may be able to convince ourselves we are, we're still having ill will for that other person. And it pulls us off the path. As the Buddha said, don't spend your time trying to straighten out the world. Straighten out your mind first. And then you're in a position to see what kind of help the world really needs. So you start with something really innocent like this, focusing on your breath and hoping that all beings can find happiness. Now you know that. A simple wish that they find happiness is not going to be enough for them to do that. They're going to have to find happiness through their actions, and you're happy to help in that direction. Whenever you can find an opportunity where someone is receptive to your help, you're happy to help. And then finally there's harmlessness, being resolved on harmlessness. This goes hand in hand with goodwill. And the Buddha said it corresponds to compassion. In other words, you see people are suffering, and they're in a position of weakness, and you're not going to take advantage of that. You're going to do what you can to help protect them. And again, the best way to offer them protection is to let them know what skillful action is, and encourage them and developing skillful karma. So these things are the right directions you want to go in, but you want to make sure you don't get deflected by attractive sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, painful sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. You don't want to become deflected by other people's bad behavior. So you've got to develop some real resilience. Fortunately, practice and concentration can help in that direction. You get a sense of well-being inside. You begin to realize that your, your well-being doesn't have to depend so much on other people's behaving in a certain way, or behaving in line with what you want them to do. It doesn't have to depend on the world being a certain way. And that makes you stronger. Then you can look more carefully at the places where you look for happiness. And you begin to see that they're not nearly as attractive as they were before. This is when you start contemplating them in terms of being in constant, stressful, not self. The problem is that most of us want to have our cake and eat it, too. We like to do concentration practice, get the mind still, but we also like to have a lot of other things being the way we want them to be. And in some cases it's possible. In other cases, though, you have to learn to say no to certain pleasures, no to certain ideas about the way the world should be. And so you've got to look at the drawbacks of getting the world the way you want it to be, because it's going to change. And this is what it's going on in the world all the time. People are trying to change the world to be the way they want it to be. This is why we're fighting all the time. So in this area of change, the Buddha says, if you're looking to place your happiness there, you're looking in the wrong place. Place your hopes for happiness here inside, and even though the mind may still be changeable, at least you can learn how to overcome that. 
it is something that lies within human power to get the mind straightened out, get it focused in the right direction, and keep it going in that direction. Not let it get easily turned around. Most of us are like those wind-up toys, those little soldiers that walk. You wind them up and they walk, walk, walk. Then they run into a little obstacle and it turns them around and they walk in another direction. They run into another tiny obstacle and it turns them around and they walk in another direction. Or even worse, you can look at the mind as being like those dust motes that you see in beams of sunlight that bounce here and bounce there. The principle of Brownian motion. Going nowhere in particular because they allow themselves to be pushed around, bounced around so easily. You want your mind to be something more solid than that. This is where the endurance comes in. You begin to realize endurance is not there just to make you grit your teeth. It's a source of genuine happiness. One, because you're not so easily affected by things outside. The mind can find some peace just settling in. And two, because You've got a good foundation for doing the things that will lead to even greater happiness. So when you think about endurance in the face of change, don't think about it as totally just gritting your teeth and putting up with things. Think of it as a genuine source of happiness, a source of joy. And that way you're more likely to be able to withstand the temptations for the mind to change direction and be less likely to be waylaid by the changes of the world. And you find that happiness does come from this strength.